Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out and hearing me speak. I am Susan Gerbic, and I am a skeptical activist. I live in Salinas, California, which is uh, very near Monterey, uh, about an hour south of San Jose. So I'm not an, uh, an L.A. person per se. This is like my second home, though. I have so many good friends here. So what I'm going to talk to you today about is just one of my projects. This is the one I'm mostly known for, and I'm mostly known for this in the paranormal community. I have quite um, some not-so-nice comments about the project I'm doing because I asked for evidence on Wikipedia, and I want Wikipedia to hold its standards to being that um, everything on there should be well-cited, relevant, and so on, and um, let's, let's keep it that way. So GSOW, that's what we call our project, which is Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia. We refer to it a lot as GSO. And what we do is we are trying to change Wikipedia and make it relevant, make it um, the citations to be something that people can look at with pride. And uh, if somebody goes to read a Wikipedia page, we want them to be able to um, be able to follow the citations that we leave at the bottom and get really good information for what they've left. Now, I am not here to say that everybody should believe everything they read on Wikipedia, because we know that's not true. We do believe that it is a great place to start, and the citations are a great place to be able to give you a nice overview of what to, to, to see on the page. How many here use Wikipedia? I should have said how many people here don't use Wikipedia. Is there anybody out there? He didn't raise his hand. You, didn't, you don't read Wikipedia? Okay, well, <laughs> most people who, and I have run into people who say that they don't use Wikipedia, or have never been there, and I say to them, well, then you're, you're still reading it, because if you read, or you listen to a podcast, or a blog, or uh, a video, a lot of people are pulling the information they find on Wikipedia right directly from there. A lot of the media has. We found many cases where we can take a, a, a sentence out of a Wikipedia article that's kind of, you know, specifically written a certain way, take it, copy it, put it into a search engine, and it'll appear on the obit for whoever it was who just recently died. They're almost just, they're just taking it verbatim off of the Wikipedia page. So we know that the Wikipedia is a lot of places. I've seen them where they have the little footnotes, still the little numbers next to them. But there's no footnotes on the news article you're reading. So it's just like copy paste. And this happens all the time. So it is what it is. And that's, we're just trying to change it. I don't know if you know this or not, but Wikipedia is the sixth or the fifth most viewed website in the world. So um, the number one is Google, number two is Facebook, number three is Yahoo, number four is YouTube, number five is some group in India, it's some social media thing in India, I don't know what it is, I can't remember, and the, and the last one is Wikipedia. So some people count the, the social group in um, India, I don't, I don't, I don't know, um, I'm not sure about that. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you one of the big projects we have. This is kind of what we're known for. It is called We Got Your Wiki Back. And when I designed this, and this is, I remember when I rolled this out at TAM 2011 or 10, I remember Wendy Hughes over here in the corner was like, oh my gosh, that's my favorite thing. It's so much fun. I really like the Wiki Back project. And when I started it, I didn't really think we were going to be a thing. I didn't know that I'd be doing lectures and blogs and, and speaking at conferences and things like that. I had no idea. I might have thought and named these things a little bit more appropriately instead of gorilla skepticism on Wikipedia, which I got from Mark Edward here in the corner. Uh, we were doing a lot of things that were more activism related, more, more mole-like, more, um, you know, behind the scenes and kind of get in. And, and he, had, he had labeled it as a gorilla kind of activity. So that's how it got the name. We were doing a lot of things that were gorilla related. So when I needed a name, I just pulled up Gorilla Skepticism and then on Wikipedia. The We Got Your Wiki Back project is something that what we're trying to do is we know that when people are trying to get information about a subject, we know that they're going to probably go to their favorite search engine, Google, Yahoo, wherever, and they're going to they're going to find um, a link, probably in the first two or three links, they're going to find a uh, reference to Wikipedia. And I call this the Goldilocks effect because sometimes they'll get a page that is really anti whatever you're looking at, or they'll get a page that is very positive. And some people don't really want to go to either of those pages first. They want to go to Wikipedia 
for a lot of reasons because we're already familiar with how Wikipedia works. You already know that there's these little blue links you click on and it goes to other pages that explains terms. We know that it's supposedly neutral. We also know that there, you're not going to get spam or new or malware or viruses if you go to their page. And if you go to somebody's personal, uh, face, personal website, you don't know if you're, that's going to happen or not. You might have to log in, sign in, join something. You don't know what's going to actually happen. Some kind of weird cookie is going to hit your, your, um, your site. So most people will go for a good overview and they will go first to Wikipedia. So we want to make sure that that Wikipedia article is well written well cited and we want to make sure the lead the first two paragraphs are in really really great shape because that's all that a lot of people read they go in and they say oh that's nonsense oh, I always kind of thought so okay never mind and so they just move on and then there are other people who will read the entire page detail by detail check citations and so on and I guess it just depends on how how into it you are so um, we we know that when people are in the media's eye we know that they're going to get hits we know that they're going to get a lot of attention, and it's more likely they're going to go to Wikipedia than they are going to go to other sites. They possibly will go to the personal websites, but they're more likely going to go to the Wikipedia page to get some kind of overview of who the person is. So what we try to do is we have a lot of pages that are on our to-do list, on our want-to-do list, to rewrite list, all kinds of things. Come on in. We have all kinds of things that we're very interested in. Um, um, getting around to. And when I say a person, we got your wiki back. We also do conferences. We also do um, organizations. We do topics. Uh, spontaneous human combustion. We just rewrote that page. That was one of my favorite pages to rewrite. It was the thing that scared me the most when I was growing up. Besides Jesus watching over my shoulder, that was pretty frightening, you know. But the idea that you could spontaneously combust as you're walking down the street just having a good day and all of a sudden, you burst into flame, and what do you do? Stop, drop, roll, you know, what if you forget, and then you're on flame, and then you're dead, and that was pretty frightening for a young kid. So, um, you know, I'm 52, 53 almost, and we didn't have the internet. We didn't have any way of going to find out anything. You wanted to know something, you asked your friend. You asked your parents. You waited for the news to come on. Maybe something would be on there. There was nothing. You go to the library, public library, you check it out, a book. I mean, what are you going to find on spontaneous human combustion? Now we have a, just a totally different way of getting information. And so we need to have this. We as um, our community of atheists, or if you want to be skeptics, is kind of the realm I'm in. I am an atheist, but um, I kind of in a whole larger umbrella of, of um Skepti scientific skepticism is more of a method. It's a way of thinking. Some people tend to focus on atheism. That is their, their, their hot topic. Some people are really into quackery, medical quackery, homeopathy, um, you know, cancer places that aren't cancer places, uh, people who, who uh, say snake oil. Uh, there's some people who are into psychics, and that's more mine. I really like the people who say they can talk to the dead. Mark Edward and I are pretty active on this, and the Investigation Network and some of the people here read as well are in that. Uh, we call them grief vampires, the people who communicate with the dead, who say they communicate with your dead loved ones and um, that kind of thing. So we've done a lot of investigations with that. And um, some are into UFOs, some are into uh, climate science, some are into just sci pure science. We have uh, uh, several editors who write pages for just astronomers that really are into that kind of stuff. So the We Got Your Wiki Back project, I'm going to show you a bunch of examples. What we're trying to do is we're trying to improve Wikipedia pages for our people because we want to make sure that when they're in the skeptic's eye, they are look respectable because they should be because we, we're not going to put up a page for somebody we don't respect. Um, and we're going to make sure they have really great citations that can be followed, that we can, um, that the media will be able to look at and get more information because not only are we trying to make sure that they're respectable in the viewpoint of you know just the average person who's looking at their page but I want you to think about this as a bigger picture we're trying to find a way of making sure that we can get let's we're going to use atheism as the example we're going to use that to to kind of change our our reputation from being baby eaters you know, we want, to, we want to try to get it to be something and, you know, whatever else that they, all the derogatory terms that they use associated with this. We want to try to make it so that we look like the average person, which we are. 
Um, a lot of the pages we put in are not, they're not dry. They're very well, um, um, we'll put down hobbies, um, things that show that they're a real person. We don't want them to look like they just sprang up out of nowhere and and they started uh, reading Dawkins or Hitchens or whatever, and they became, boom, I'm an atheist, ha No, a lot of the times there's a journey that they go on, and we want to make sure that that journey's there so the people who are reading this and finding these pages, they can uh, find people that they can also relate to, that they had that same journey. Um you know, I was raised a uh, Southern Baptist, became an atheist. Uh, I found a book on atheism on Madeline Marie O'Hare at the library, checked it out. Oh, my God, I checked it out several times. I couldn't let my mom know. I would take the book, and I would put it amongst a bunch of other books at the library. You know how they used to have a checkout line where you just kind of you put, like, two books on top, two books on the bottom, and you sneak it in the middle? It was like reading porn. So, you know, you just sneak it out, and you kind of distract the, the person checking out your book. Oh, nice. Nice skirt. Oh, yeah. And they check it out. And you're like, yes, I got that one through. Then you have to turn it back in. You kind of sneak it in when they're not there. It was really it was really bad because I really thought I was all alone. I really didn't believe that there was anybody else out there. So we need to have these in places where we can find that. And so young and people emerging from um, the this world of religion, they have they understand that there's other people out there. Okay, so let's look and see. The first person I'm going to talk about is Nathan Phelps. Has anybody met Nathan Phelps? Oh, yes. He is a sweetheart. Um, Mark Edward and I went to uh, lectured at QED in Manchester last year, which is the big skeptic conference for um, Britain. And we met Nathan Phelps. And what an absolute sweetheart he is. I mean, seriously, this guy has just got to be the nicest thing I've ever met. He is very charismatic. And I kind of wonder about that he, you know, his father probably was very charismatic. Nathan Phelps, for the few of you who don't know, is the son of uh, Westboro Baptist Fred Phelps. So uh, Nathan Phelps is uh, one of us. He is a, um, a gay right uh, activist. He is a, um, he's with the Center for Inquiry Canada. He's a um, often lectures on his uh, the abuse that he experienced at the hands of his father, and uh, Nathan Phelps. Okay, so let me back up really, really quickly. When somebody's going through training, GSOW training, we I do all the training if it's English, and uh, what I do is I they have to go through a series of you know training edits and so on, and then at the end I assign them five pages. I say these are all pages that need to be rewritten choose one. And I try to make it towards the area of whatever it is that my editor is, is interested in. Like I say, some people are interested in like the natural sciences, uh, earth sciences. Some people are more interested in UFOs, uh, chemtrails. I have one that was very interested too, interested in chemtrails. One is a chemistry major who's very interested in anything that has to do with chemistry, all kinds of different things. We have a huge variety of people in my, in the, in the project and they have lots of interest. So this young man, had been a Wikipedia, Wikipedia editor before, but he'd always done tame edits, you know, like changing the spelling of things and making sure the citation's in good shape. He'd never done anything that was out there. And he came to me and he said, you know, I'm tired of doing this. I want to do something more. I want to make a bigger difference. I want to educate people. I want to um, do something more. I want to join your team. Some Wikipedia editors don't do well joining our team. They're more of a lone wolf. They want to be on their own and do... Uh, their own thing, and that's fine because we're 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 good friends with most Wikipedia editors, and um, we follow all the rules. Uh, we just have a twist, so and a speciality. So, this young man, uh, Chris Chris Allen is his name. He chose Nathan Phelps. So he's going along on our forum. We have a forum where we do all this on, and we talk, and we discuss the pages, and we critique, and we talk about how maybe you could find a better citation here or. Um, we're very tough on each other. If we don't like the way it's written, we'll tell them. If we don't, um, if there's something that's not cited correctly, we're on it. Um, we'll, we'll, we do a lot of different things to make sure that the page, once it goes live, it is in good shape because we're going to get a lot of criticism. So this was a Nathan Phelps page he chose. And he said that, um, you know, we're working on it just in the background, just blah, blah, blah. Let's, oh, yeah. How about we get a better picture? Oh, can you find a better citation for this? La la la. No big deal. No hurry. Some some training can take weeks to a year. It, I go tire, entirely on the schedule of the person who's training. It's there's there's a series of things you got to do, and you have to be done to my satisfaction. But 
generally, you know, I'm pretty nice about it and we'll, we'll train you through, but I'm not going to cut too many corners. So anybody here on Facebook, you've heard of this thing called Facebook. <laughs> so I have a lot of friends on my Facebook page. I love Facebook. I don't think this project could exist without Facebook. And what we did is I don't read my Facebook feed because I have too many friends. It's just, I don't have that kind of life. I wish I could. I wish I could read and I wish you guys would stop putting up cat videos because, oh my Lord, today I was, I was distracted by a cat video. Oh, they were the cutest little kittens. Oh my God, they were so cute. But anyway, so we tried, try, um, I think that's what's wrong with the world. Honestly, we're not getting anything done because there's too many cat videos. But, um, so I was just, I went, I got in bed and I'm looking at my phone just before I'm falling asleep. It's like midnight and I see, you know, how you turn on your phone or whatever. And all of a sudden there's, there's the feed. And then before you can click over to your notifications or your private messages, you see something. Usually it's a cat video. But it's, um, I saw Nathan Phelps had made an announcement that his father was in hospice or was, you know, had taken to the hospital and he didn't have long to live. And you're like, oh my gosh, Fred Phelps is dying, maybe in the next day or two. And here I am laying in bed knowing one of the few people in the world who knows that we're rewriting Nathan Phelps' Wikipedia page. And it was sitting in our forum, ready to almost go. I mean, it was like, you know, maybe another week. We, we would have had it completely happy. Everybody would be thrilled. And I said, this is going to be big news. We have to do something. Let's do it now, 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 now. So I put out a message on my forum. I said, whoever's awake next. And the nice thing about my forum is that we're international. I have people all over the world, lots of Australians um, in the, the um, all over, middle, UK, different places, down in South America, Canada. So I put a message. I said, whoever is awake next, this has got to be fixed. We need this page live now. The media is going to hit this any moment, and it's going to be everywhere. So um, one of my editors, Ryan, who is in the UK, got the message. He got up. And by the time I woke up in the morning, it was taken care of. It was really great. He had gotten up. He'd gone through the page, made sure it was in really great shape. And then Chris, he got a hold of Chris and said, I don't know what you're doing today, but you got to call in sick or something because you got to get this page live and we need it live now. So Chris was like, oh my gosh, you know, he'd never, like I said, he's been fixing spelling errors for, you know, a year. And all of a sudden now he's thrown into this and he handled it really great. And I'm going to show you what he did. So now I know you're dying. You're looking at this page. So this was the Nathan Phelps page before we got involved. Look at that. Seven citations. I mean, is this respectable? Does this, does this make the atheism community look like or something. Does this guy look really respectable? I mean, I know it's probably pretty okay. This is better than a lot of people's pages. It even has a photo, which is really good. So here he is. This is the page, seven, seven citations, three external links. Eh, okay, that's all right. So then after he was done, this is what he released. And this picture was taken at the QED um, conference that I was at, I attended. And now look at it. Here we go. We go down here. See how we're scrolling, leaving Westboro Baptist, his uh, From Faith to Atheism. Here's that picture again. Here's his uh, career. Here's a criticism section. We love criticism sections. My Wikipedia page has a criticism section too. We love that. Um, the criticism is all from his family, the Westboro Baptist, which is great. And then if you go down here, you can see we're at 33 citations, which is a really strong page. So now, what happened is, this is March 2014, his um, father, it's hitting the news that Fred Phelps is, is in the hospital. The media is like, wow, go for it. So they start going at it. Here's the Fred Phelps page. Now, Chris Allen, the editor, uh, this is how we train GSOW editors, is to make sure that you're getting the message out to places where it needs to be. Let's get, some, let's get this so it's places where it can be hit. And I'm going to do a little fancy little thing called alt fine. And I'm going to type in the word Nathan. And you see up here in this corner, it says one of eight. So I don't remember if he had any mentions of his son on his Wikipedia page, but now he does. So you can see here, Nathan Phelps and the Nathan talking about physical abuse by his father. So um, it's going to be something where people are going to want to go to. And this is a live edit. So this, if they click on this right here, this hyperlink, they're going to get the Wikipedia page for Nathan Phelps. And same up here in the info box, this is a live edit as well. So if somebody only reads the first little bit of Fred Phelps, hopefully they'll notice that there is a page for Nathan Phelps and for Shirley, uh, who is um, the one who's the most vocal of the Westboro Baptist right now. And then going down here at the bottom, 
you'll see, oh, that's John Nan, John Nanathan. And then down here, excommunication and death. Fred, uh, Nathan Phelps released that just before Fred Phelps' death, maybe a week or so before, he was he was starting to lose his edge. He was starting to make friends with the people in the cross the street at the uh, Rainbow House. Um, he had, and so it looks like the uh, church was going to excommunicate their founder because he was starting to have leanings towards the gay community and, and sympathizing with them. Very interesting. It would have been fascinating to see what would have happened if he had lived. But he died very soon after that. And um, let me see if I can see really quick. This isn't the slide I normally would use, but um, I, I don't know if you're familiar with some different names in the atheist community. Have you heard of him at Metha, who writes his friendly, athe friendly atheist blog? Um, I believe he's quoted on this page. Um, there's also, I think, Matt Dillahunty, another prominent atheist. Um, Fred Phelps, founder of God Hates Fags, Westboro Baptist Church is on the edge of death. So you can see that we have some different quotes from people in the atheist community on the Fred Phelps Wikipedia page, which is, which is wonderful. Okay, so let's push this even farther. Let's go to the Westboro Baptist Church Wikipedia page, which is totally different. Six mentions of Nathan Phelps on the Westboro Baptist page. Here he is. You can see, again, another hyperlink to his page. And um, down in the citations, again, you'll see other um, atheists have um, citations on the, this page. I didn't my group didn't necessarily put all these on here because the Wikipedia pages for Westboro and for Fed Phelps were already written, and they were already in pretty good shape. We just added the Nathan Phelps things to it and made sure that everything was good shape before the media hit. We don't always get this kind of heads up. We were really lucky to have that Nathan Phelps page in the way it was. It was almost like divine intervention. <laughs> you know, I kind of, it kind of makes you think because it was just like a perfect storm because we have lists of the people whose pages need work. I mean, lots of lists. And I just happened to look at that, that needing to be released. We could have easily have just happened to be uh, reading the newspaper a few days later and saying, oh, Fred Phelps died, oh my gosh. And then it would have been too late. So this is this is what happens. Now this is stats. Now this is something anybody can look at. This is Nathan Phelps. This is March of 2014. And this is how many views he gets. Because I mean, you know, I'm sitting here talking to you. Does this mean anything? Is this important at all? Well, you can see that Nathan Phelps up until this day was getting about 167 views to his Wikipedia page a day. That was that awful looking stub page that we, we were talking about, 171 and so on. Pretty bad. Actually, 100 views a day is pretty good. The guy's in the news. He's getting media attention. But look here. This is whenever his father is in the news, 53,000. Then he started to get media, uh, media starting to call him and saying, hey, let me talk to you about your father. They're not going to say, I saw on Wikipedia that you had a lot of problems with your dad. No. They're going to see that, um, they're going to see, you know, they're not going to say that. They saw that, but they're not going to say that. They're not going to say, I was reading your Wikipedia page. No, they're going to say, you're the person to go to to talk to about this Westboro Baptist guy. And of course, they've got to fill newspaper pages. So so this is probably when it was announced that his father was dying right in here. The media is hitting it. And then it dies down a little bit, and then Fred Phelps dies. And this says the March 20th, but um, the stats are off about 24 hours. So I would guess that Fred Phelps died about the 19th of March. Let's see what it says real quick here. Let me go up here to the top. We'll go to the source of all knowledge and look at and see what, what it was. March 19th. See, he died at March 19th, and the stats hit about the 20th. So Nathan Phelps Page received 76,000 views that month. It was rated 6,000th in the whole world of Wikipedia hits in English. That is a major win. That is a major thing that happened, and it got, and these weren't just your average person looking at it. It was somebody who was just curious about it. Let's look, just for curiosity's sake, let's look. Here's Westboro Baptist views. They normally get 2,000 views a day, and then when Fred Phelps died, 26,000, 32,000. So look at all these hits. These are people who are going to the Westboro Baptist page or the Fred Phelps page and then going over to Nathan's page. So... You can see this is 32,000 on the most, and it translated to about 14,000. So not everybody's reading the whole page. Most people are probably just looking at the lead and then just kind of going over and, and, and saying, hey, that's cool, he's dead, or whatever they said. 
but some people followed the links we left. And then here's the here's the Fred Phelps page, who was normally getting about 900 views a day. That's a lot, a thousand views a day for him himself. And then when it was announced he was in hospice, 75,000 views. And then again up here on the day of his death, 127,000 views. That's major. Now we don't work on pages just to work on pages for people we're going to hit the media. No, we're out. We're all about trying to get pages out there that are. Um, uh, I want the the editors responsible to work on. I want people to work on pages that they feel passionate about. If it's UFOs, great. I don't care. I just want these pages improved. There's so much work to be done. Um, I'm going to show you a couple other examples really quick. This is Paul Kurtz. I don't know if anybody here has mentioned have heard of him. Um, I had the privilege of meeting him um, years and years ago in 2002 when I was getting started with the skepticism movement. And we have worked on his Wikipedia page, but what here, what I'm trying to show you is this is a page we translated into Russian. And then we translated it into Portuguese. And we do this with a lot of pages. Nathan Phelps' page has already been translated, I know for sure, in Russian. And uh, possibly others as well. Because it is too important to concentrate only on English. Uh, GSOW is one of the few projects that I know of that really is, embraces other uh, languages. And we're, we're really aggressive about it too. And this is one of the reasons why we have to use a private forum. We can't just use Wikipedia. We've been criticized for having a place where people can talk about Wikipedia editing that's not on Wikipedia. Sorry. But um, this way we can, we can talk to people and, um, in other languages. Our German editor can talk to the French editor, who can talk to the English editors, and so on. And we can, we can all combine. And we do that all the time where people are having problems with words or they find a reference that's in Dutch. So the Dutch editors come in and they say, here's what it says, and, and so on. And this isn't Google Translate or anything like that. This is translated by a native speaker. This is how awesome my project is and my people are. I don't know if you know who Emery Emery is. He's an outspoken atheist, and we wrote his Wikipedia page. Um, Emory Emory has a podcast called Skeptically Yours and Ardent Atheists. We are trying to make sure that people like this, and he is somebody notable enough to have a Wikipedia page, but we want to make sure it represents um, him well. But Emory Emory and Heather Henderson uh, possibly may eventually have some more media attention where they are trying to, um, you know, let's just think you're a producer or something like that and you're, or you're writing a blog, you're writing a story, or you want to find a, you're trying to make an atheist comedy and you want to find somebody to, to, that maybe you can pattern the characters on. I mean, this, it's endless. This could be somebody that they would find and they could stumble across this page. Maybe they listen to his podcast, who knows? Here's Heather Henderson. And this Wikipedia page was, uh, I wrote, I wrote this and I absolutely love doing this. When you are an editor and you're writing these pages, you fall in love with your, your, your person. Even if it is a controversial figure, you, it's, you have no, you have to fall in love with these people in ways that you can't imagine. You become an expert on them because you have to read everything. You have to look at everything. You have to go through photos. It's, it's amazing. So Heather Henderson, I wrote this Wikipedia page. Just, um, it's only been up a few days, actually, now that I think about it. Uh, maybe a couple weeks. So she's now got a huge, uh, it's bigger than Emory Emory's, which I'm sure he's not thrilled with, but oh well. <laughs> Too bad. Here's Matt Dillahunty. Um, I didn't know that Matt Dillahunty is not a pastor. I, I, I thought he was in seminary and he became a pastor, but actually he never, he got close to becoming a pastor in the, in the Christian community. But um, he left uh, very soon after. And this is what I call a non-scroller. This is his entire Wikipedia page before GSOW got involved. This is it. You don't have to scroll. It's done. There you go. It's not very respectful of this man. Um, um, he is much more well-known. Um, he should have a better page. Because here's how I feel. These people represent us. And if we don't have their backs... Then why should why should society pay any why should they care why should they give any respect to the people who are our spokespeople if we can't respect them this is our uh, if we can't do this you know this we're the people who are supposed to have their backs okay he can't write his own Wikipedia page his wife can't write his Wikipedia page his brother in law probably can't do it it's going to take somebody to go and and do this and it takes weeks to do some of these in some cases so this is the Matt Dillahunty page. 
And now this is the Matt Dillahunty page. Same picture. At least he had a photo. And um, it had six citations. Let me see if I have another picture. Here he is. And uh, this is continuing the Matt Dillahunty page. And continuing the Matt Dillahunty page. And continuing the Matt Dillahunty page. Now he's at 27 citations. He was at six. And of course, this can continue, continue expanding. Here's one more. This is uh, Jerry Coyne. Does anybody know Jerry Coyne? Follow his blog. Is it Jerry Coyne? Nope. That's not Jerry Coyne. There's Jerry Coyne. Does anybody know Jerry Coyne? Very nice man. He writes a blog called Evolution is True. Why Evolution is True? Very outspoken. Um, um, he's the counter, he's the anti PZ Myers, I guess they call him. Um, he had, a, he's very outspoken. Um, wonderful guy. And see his cat. He asked if we don't remove his picture of his cat because he loves his picture. So, um, and I like that because it shows, you know, cats, cat videos. People are attracted to anything that has to do with cats. So he had 10 citations on his Wikipedia page when we got involved. And now he has 24 citations. And the page goes on and on. And I didn't want to have to put it in here. Uh, the person who was writing this Wikipedia page for, for the Jerry Coyne uh, page, he said, can I stop now? Every time I turn around, I find another <laughs> citation. I'm, I need to be done. It's been a month. Can I please be done? And we're like, just stop. Somebody else can work on it. I mean, I think 24 citations is plenty because the page is very long, very, very long. So um, I'm just going to leave it with here. But I do have a surprise for you that's after this screen that anybody was reading the meetup page. I mentioned that I have a few things to add that we're going to release right now. And uh, the reason why I'm here in front of you is because um, I don't necessarily expect anybody here today who's going to just run up to me and just say, please, let me join, let me join. I have to be in this thing. I don't necessarily expect that. In fact, if you do, I'm going to say, think about it and talk to me in a day or two. Because a lot of times people get really passionate about things. I'm really good at influencing people and getting people inspired and just like, oh, we got to do this. We got to change the world. But um, I want you to think about it because once you join GSOW, I'm going to put you through some training and it is fun. I mean, you know, it's fun, but it is, it is, there's work. And then when you're done training, we've invested a lot of time in you. It's not like joining the Navy or the Army or anything like that, but we really are expecting you to, to, to start working on things and to get things done and, um, and to be around. It's a lifelong thing. It's not something that you're going to necessarily do and just, do one page and then leave. You're going to become addicted to it probably, we hope. And you're going to be part of the team and you're going to have a new group of friends that are all over the world. And you might even pick up, might even be able to brush up on the French or whatever it is that you used to know. It's because um, you're going to be intermixing with people all over. Uh, we are a very large group. We have a little over 100 people in our forum and we have the potential to grow to thousands of people. Um, I don't know how we'll manage it, but we have the, the room. The infrastructure is built to be able to do this. Um, and um, so again, I'm not sure that I expect anybody to actually join, but what I do is I do need your, I do need a little help from people. When, um, if you could give us a little help when we're tweeting something or we're on Facebook and we're mentioning something, I release a blog every two months. Each blog has a whole lot of information, all the edits, the big edits we've done. And we put it out there so that everybody can look at it and say, oh, my gosh, they did this and they did that. Oh, and this, you know, it's kind of like a whole lot. It has links to our lectures that we've done in the last two months. It has links. It'll have this video on there in a couple months. And um, we'd like to have that shared because obviously my goal is to get this out to our community. I'm not willing, not looking to be on CNN, Oprah. You know, that's Nancy Grace. That is not my my goal because I'm not going to find the editors from there. And I'm going to attract way too much criti criticism and way too much scrutiny. And I've already got enough as it is, and that's fine. We can handle it. The paranormal community is already aware of us, and they're already scared of us. And uh, that's fine. But we don't want to be out too far because we don't want to have, obviously, issues. And I don't want just anybody joining that it's, you know. So, um, but if you could re retweet our tweets, if you could um, help us out with more lecture gigs, obviously I need to get more exposure in the community. I would, you are our first atheist group I've, I've spoken to, believe it or not. I've spoken to many, many skeptic groups, but you're the first atheist. So I've geared this all towards atheist topics. I could easily, just as easily do this with astronomers or 
spontaneous human combustion people. I don't know. I could easily gear it to whatever. Um, so if you can help us find lectures, uh, areas to move to in areas, and I have people all over the world who can do lectures. Somebody in the East Coast could easily come up and do a lecture as well. I'd rather be the first one asked, and if you can send me there, that would even be better because I sure love to travel. Okay, so um, we'll take questions in a second. What I want to do is I just want to show you what's about to be released. I was hoping it would be done for you guys today. It's done. It just needs to be published. In fact, it might be there. I haven't looked at my phone, but it might actually be up right now. But I think you guys know who this person is, Ryan Bell. So this page, he's going to be your lecturing for you guys next, next lecture, right? He's coming to speak to you. So I haven't met Ryan Bell, but he was at QED, the, the, the conference I was at last year, Mark and I were at last year. And um, he made such an impression on my editors, they just kind of said, hey, I'm doing it. In fact, the woman who did this page is the same person who did, um, I think, Matt, um, Seth, Seth Andrews' page. And her name is uh, Jelena Levine. And she's one of my Russian editors. She lives in the um, UK. And she's, um, so I know this is going to immediately get translated into Russian because that's what she does. But a lot of people are able to do many multitasks. Maybe their native language isn't English. Her native language is Russian. So the another joy of having a team like ours is she writes the page, and then we go through and we make sure that we get all the citations and all the word, you know, grammar correct because she's not a native English speaker. So his Wikipedia page, and here's the second page of it, and you'll see there's Heather Henderson right there along with Tim Minchin and um, the people who are following him around with the Year, About God, Year Without God movie, which should be coming out in the fall. Well, guess what? The movie's coming out in the fall. We've already got his Wikipedia page. We're already ahead of the game. We're already there so that when the media starts looking for, um, and then once the media starts, this gets even bigger because it's big now, but it's going to get bigger real soon. Um, this page is already made, and it already mentions people like him at Metha from Friendly Atheist right here you can see. Um, and I'm glancing over here to see who else I see that are on here. Maybe he, his lecture that you, he's going to be doing for you next uh, time will be on this Wikipedia page as an external link so that people can, can actually find uh, Atheists United and maybe get interested. Hey, I'm in that area. I didn't know there was atheists in L.A. Who thought? You know? So it's, as I say, we're all in this together. We really need to make sure that we're looking out for each other. We got each other's backs. And um, it's, it's just so important to have these kinds of things out there so that we can try to change the uh, opinion of uh, society towards atheism. They start understanding, hey, they're just some guy. They're just, th that could be my neighbor. That's the guy I'm buying groceries from. That's the person who cuts my hair. It's just, it's, we're not wearing horns eating babies every day. I mean, you know, once a week or two. But, you know, that's kind of thing. So I'm done. Question. Well, not a question. I would just say also it's it's very good for people who are closet atheists to find out that, that there are people in society who have gone through that whole same transition. Right. And that's what we want. We want to have these pages be personal. Again, you know, they like cats. They water ski. They're just real people, and that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to – this isn't the – we're not putting gossipy stuff on these pages, but we don't want it to be like an um, a application. It looks like their CV, you know, their dry, I went to school here, and here's where I was raised. And, you know, I want something a little more on there, not the people version. So what other questions do you have for me? Yes, sir. Yeah. I, th I think you mentioned – maybe I misunderstood you mentioned it uh, – Somebody got in touch with an editor who was expert on on a particular subject. How does somebody know who wrote or edited the, um, the, the Wikipedia entry? How do they get a hold of the editor? Or how, how do we find the expert? Somebody know who wrote or edited the Wikipedia entry. Oh, how does somebody know who's edited the Wikipedia entry? Wikipedia is completely um, a free. Um, source. You don't even have to be logged in. You don't have to have an account. But at the top of every Wikipedia page, there's this thing right here. I don't know if anybody's ever noticed. It says view history. This tells us exactly how many edits have been done, exactly who did it, what time they did it, what they changed. Uh, there's no way you can hide your Wikipedia editing. Everybody has it. So like this one, currently that was the page you looked at. Here's the previous page and it tells you that somebody went in and changed the word 
atheist. Oh, God. No, come on, people. They're getting rid of, we're kind of starting to go through and taking out, there's been a lot of work about taking out the word atheism because it's not a religion. It's, it's right. And it's a flaw. Well, yeah, it's not a religion. We don't belong to the atheist religion. So there's been a lot of controversy about it, but it looks like they're starting to change it. So this, in this case, they're taking it to none instead of atheism for his. And, and, and you'll see that uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, there was an awful lot of uh, talk about that. It's, it's an, it's a Wikipedia thing. Here's some citation cleans up, but I can see who these people are. This person here, Matthew Fresnel, who I don't know who he is. I can look at every con contribution he's made since the beginning. He's had this account. And, um, so everything is, you can see all the people he's, he's edited and every, here's one character change. So you can't hide from Wikipedia editors. You cannot find, hide from us. That's why everything has to be done to the letter all the time, follow the rules because, you know, I'm, I'm a public figure and um, I don't want to have, have people, you know, accusing me of something that I haven't done and which the paranormal community does all the time. But um, it's, it's like, how do you prove a dis how do you not, how do you prove a negative? They could say, I could have been that guy, Nathan, whoever he is. I mean, Matthew, whoever he is, Matthew, whoever I'm looking at, Matthew Fresnel, that could be me. I could just be using an alias. You can't prove it. So other questions? Yes, sir? You looking at me? Yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking at you. Yeah. Are you looking at me? I'm looking at you. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure that what I have to say will result in a question. Okay. Uh, that's what I was, but, but I do have a concern and... Uh, Go for it. You know what my, my first adult purchase was? Out of college, it was a set of Encyclopedia Britannica. Yes. Uh, I have many, I have many that's sets why, still. Like, what kind of life do I have, right? And I remember getting it, and the boxes come in, and they weigh you know, like a ton. And I just, oh my god, I want to read the whole thing. And uh, I never did it, but in any case, I have since then taught English uh, writing composition for 40 years, and research papers. And, uh, you know, at the outset, we always discourage students from using simply and exclusively reference material, and always pointed them to primary sources and books. And, uh, and that has become less of a, uh, or I, I'm not sure that it's become less of a concern, but it's become more prevalent to use these as the only source. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, having children myself, we go right to Wikipedia, and that might be the end of it. Uh, but, but I guess my general concern is, while I absolutely love this project, I, I think that there ought to be, some, I mean, you started out by saying this is a good place to begin, I think. Wikipedia is, yeah, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know that there's enough emphasis on that. Because I do think there's something to be had from going to primary sources and, and reading whole texts. Uh, and so um, there's such a proliferation of, of information. Uh, I was just talking to her earlier about something that Richard Dawkins posted about uh, a study that MIT did on, uh, on the effect of, uh, of political rumors, that if you counter political rumors with facts, they tend to actually strengthen the rumors. So it's, it's like there's so much information out there that it's... Uh, I like the idea of having one source that's absolutely reliable, but I'm also concerned about you know, this. As I said, I don't think there's going to be a question. Yeah. Well, no. I, I mean, I, I, I am from a generation where my parents were older. Uh, my dad and mom were in their 40s when they had me. And so we had Encyclopedia Britannica, and I still have them. I have walls of Encyclopedia Britannica. I love them. My dad would go in and he'd color. I can see you laughing over there. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, London, huh? Yeah, so you'd go in there and they'd... They, my dad would color in the pictures, and we'd refer to the stuff on there. I love encyclopedias. Absolutely adore them. But they weren't any more factual necessarily sometimes than, than the Wikipedia articles. At least now the Wikipedia article can be changed. So there's, it, as I said at the beginning, it is what it is. It exists. What are you going to do? Let's take advantage of it and use it to our advantage. Um, the, but now here, here's several things. Primary sources are not... You can't use primary sources on Wikipedia for a lot of reasons. One is because a primary source needs to be interpreted by an expert. An expert should be the secondary source. We can't go, we can use primary sources to some extent, but we want secondary sources. And also, I mean, we have to make it to a point where it's, we're not including everything. We have to have, we can't have every human being on the earth have a Wikipedia page. That would just be insane. So we have to make it for the people who are notable. So there's very strict rules, and they're usually very evenly um, upheld. 
Um, yeah. yeah. Since you mentioned that, what, what are the criteria? For notability? Secondary sources. You mean like the quantity of secondary sources? Well, quantity and quality. It's, it's a kind of a vague thing. Um, if you have been, um, you have to have been infamous or famous. media media attention. Um, secondary sources like have you been quoted in the New York Times or the LA Times for something? Um, have you um, been uh, like well for Nathan Phelps? He's he became noteworthy because the media was going to him as the expert. They're saying you must be the expert on on uh, Westboro Baptist. So let's interview you. And then once they interview him, he becomes the expert on it, even though it's kind of a circular thing. He becomes the expert of the expert. And uh, that, that works. Um, one of the reasons why I have a Wikipedia page is because of the criticism I was receiving from people in the paranormal community, like uh, Rupert Sheldrick, who believes that animals and flowers talk to each other, and they share genetic uh, communication and dogs can know when you're coming home because they're psychic and so on. But um, he believes and Deepak Chopra have kind of made me notable by giving me the criticism because they're notable. It's it's, it, it's a little crazy. And it is a little bit uh, a, a vague kind of thing. Yes, Cindy? I was just going to try to illustrate. Um, Susan showed the images of um, Emory, Emory and Heather Henderson. And how and I was kind of a witness to Heather's page being created. And how the the secondary source that they that Susan started with will happen to have nothing to do with atheism and skepticism. Heather happened to have been a child actress, a child TV star. And that was the the jumping off place that Susan could use to, give her a Wikipedia page, yes. Yeah, to mm -hmm. create the Wikipedia page, that was the notoriety. It had nothing to do with what Heather is known for now. And they and it was but it was what Wikipedia would ex the Wikipedia editing team, you know, editors would accept as this jumping off place, and so she was able to build all of this other notoriety, or, or like build Heather's page for things like this. Right, and that's exactly right. So we can take, there are people who are, I don't know if you know who uh, Yaman Chan is. He is a, um, he was on Survivor, that TV program where you go to the islands. He was on it for two different islands. He's also an expert table tennist. Um, He's also a skeptic, and he lectures at skeptical conferences. So people who are into table tennis or survivor history, they go to his Wikipedia page, and boom, there's a skepticism stuff. And this is Heather Henderson, and, um, and just exactly, when I was thinking of writing Heather Henderson's page, before I started, the first thing I did is I said, does she have anything noteworthy enough that's going to allow me to have this page? Because I'm not going to spend months on this darn thing and get to the end and go, Oh, well, I guess she's not noteworthy enough. And some of the things that were that allowed me to be able to do this was, um, I'm trying to look at it really quickly, but she said, yeah, she was a regular on one of these dance USA party cities when she was like 12 or 18 or something like that. High school, yeah. And she was, was uh, that was hilarious. I had, to, I had to read all that. She was interviewed by uh, Philadelphia Weekly several times. She was, um, she's a burlesque. And... Um, and she sings and so on, and that was able to be able to get her to her Wikipedia page has absolutely nothing to do with skepticism, but once an atheism. But once I was able to create that, then see she was in Billboard magazine. She's also had a oh, what is that uh, card? Um, she's been on Heavy Metal magazine, a model for Heavy Metal magazine. She's also been on um, what's that card game you guys all played? Um, not Cards Against Humanity, older than that. Um, risk. Not Risk. <laughs> no, you guys, you're thinking too hard. It's that nerdy thing, the game that has the people all dressed up in the... Mansions and Dragons? Magic? Magic, The Gathering. Yeah, she has a Magic The Gathering card. Thank you. She was a model on that. So that's another thing that kind of gets, that increases her notoriety. I know it's crazy. 
And she now, well, now she, yeah, I can talk about that. But here's another thing that you mentioned about um, people say, oh, I don't want my students to go to a page because it has, oh, I'll be right there. They don't want the students to go to a page because it isn't, it could change and it could have all sorts of garbage on it. But you as a professor, you can assign a student, and I think that it's a great idea to go to a Wikipedia page to get an overview of history or whatever, or a scientific theory. You can actually go to a page like, let's say this one right here, exactly this one on May 3rd, 2015 at 1459 in, uh, hour. You could say, this page I've read, this page is correct. If you were, if you were trying to do a historic you know, you want to assign a Wikipedia page. You could tell your students, this page, I know everything on it is correct. Because this is in her history, and it can't be changed. This page right here can't be changed. It's a revision of an old page, and so that's a permanent link to this page. So a, a, a professor could actually assign, for, for background, you could say, these pages, these pages, these pages, these pages. This will give you good background on World War II. I've checked them out. They're good. Don't use them as a primary source, but you can use for primary sources, all these things down here at the bottom. Those are all, a lot of more primary and secondary sources, some primary, mostly secondary. And then once you get to that secondary source, maybe it'll lead you to the primary source. So it'll let you, it'll let you if you know how to use it for good, um, this will help you a lot. And your question in the back was? The, uh, the examples you brought up were about people. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is also Wikipedia entries for subject matters. Yes. And I guess that's where there is a little bit more chance of conflict of information. Well, they, they give us conflict over these people, too. So let's try. Give me a topic. Atheism. Okay, atheism. Um, actually, um, this is, looks like it's pretty well done. Now, atheism is going to have a lot of history in it. And... Let's look. Here's where here's where editors go and talk. This is the talk page. Anybody can go here. You don't have to be an editor. This page is where a a um, editors discuss. So we're not going to let just some random person come in here and just start talking and just start changing. So if you want to propose a change to the atheism topic uh, page, same with the evolution page, same with the homeopathy page, same with the Scientology page, same with astrology, anything that's contentious and popular. If you want to change it, I mean, like not a spelling error, but like add something to it, you have to discuss it on the talk page. And these are your peers. You can see where it says it contains controversial issues which have reached a consensus for approach and neutrality. We're not going to let, nobody's going to let you change this page because we've already decided it's perfect or as perfect as we can get because we've had people from both sides, all sides, every side talking about it and they've talked this to death and nobody argues as much as a Wikipedia editor. We are like, you should see these people, two dots, two spaces after a period, one space after a period. They could go on for months on that topic. I mean, th these are people, they might not identify as skeptics, but they are skeptics because they are just very detailed about everything, you know, uh, uh, English spelling or British spelling, which is the correct, oh my gosh, you know, so nobody's going to be able to change the atheism page, look, please be calm and civil, if only the world could be run by Wikipedia editors, we have so many rules to assume good faith, be polite, here's no personal attacks, we ban people, we can do all kinds of things, but look, here's all the discussions on atheism, and there's probably like an encyclopedia full of other information in other areas that that would discuss something like that. Some place like spontaneous human combustion, there's not going to be quite as much controversy or talking. Yes? Um, well, regarding the, this consensus, how is this group determined and how, when do they, when do they arrive at this consensus? Okay, that's a really good question. Um, I get this a lot where people will say, well, they did this or they did that. And I want you to understand, there is no they. That's us. People just like you. Me, I'm not paid to do this. I didn't sign up to be a Wikipedia editor. There's no form to fill out. I you know, made a username. I could even do it anonymously. Anybody can do it anonymous, anonymously. Um, there is no body deciding. There's admins, but there's probably one admin for every 10,000 editors. So it's, you know, you, there does get to be a little bit of, some people have a lot more skills than others, and they their opinion might rate a little higher than others. But there, this consensus is made by just people going in and saying well-argumented, well well, 
thought out arguments. They, they recite policy. They say, well, according to policy, you know, of this, and then somebody will come in. It's like a bunch of lawyers. You know, it, it, instead of being appointed, it can be really dry. And they can be hilarious. You read some of these talk pages, like on psychics, somebody will come in and they'll say, well, but Sylvia Brown was a really nice person. She sold all these books and people loved her and she helped so many people. Why is this page so negative? And then you see the editors come in and try to be very polite and say, well, because there's no secondary sources that say that she ever did anything other than get it wrong. And all the secondary sources we have show time after time after time that she was 100% wrong. And here's how she held, uh, harmed people. And I'm so sorry that, um, you know, we don't have a lot of fuzzy, warm, fuzzy things on her page saying how nice she was because nobody's written about that in a secondary source and that person needs to be notable and they have to publish it in a notable place. So there is no, so it's just people. It's, it's just people getting together who, who care about atheism and they type and they write and they make an argument and they say, and then people just kind of come to a consensus. It just kind of happens. It's like, it's like learning to drive on the freeway. You know, you're, you're driving and you're driving and you're going to merge and you just kind of, it's like a zipper. It just kind of happens. People just all of a sudden they're there. It's like they don't crash into each other when they merge. It's just, I don't know, we human want to get along with each other. Yes, sir. When you had Heather's page ready to go up, who at that time decided that she was notable or not notable? Nobody. What happens is we put the page up and you make it live. Woo! We launch the page. Woo! Go on to something else. And, um, there are uh, algorithms in Wikipedia that will make that a new page. It's like it gets like a little tag or something. And there are people in Wikipedia who are interested in just looking at new pages. A lot of times people are writing pages for their garage band. They're not notable. Or a psychic's putting up their own page using a pseudonym. Or lots of stuff like that. People will put a page saying, oh, I love this podcast. And they put out a, a page that's like four sentences long, no citations. And those get immediately deleted. There's an instant delete thing that they can do. But um, so somebody probably, probably many people looked at it and said, okay, fine, fine, fine. And they just go through the list because there's probably, you know, uh, hundreds of these that go up every day. And somebody just kind of goes through. That's their hobby. Some people are into just correcting spelling errors of certain things. I've heard of people who have such hobbies of just, it's just very anal. They go in and they create like you, Y-O-U-R, and versus Y-O-U-R-E, that's their whole life is changing the spelling on Wikipedia to the correct usage of the word your. And they're, and they're, and they're just like, that's their life. So when it came with uh, Heather, when the page went up, I'm sure there's people out there who said, yeah, that's fine. And then nobody said anything and nobody cared. And then maybe somebody, I'll accept you. But, oh, yeah, she, uh, she went in and said, this is so <laughs> I did. And, and I'm one of those people that, that Susan's talking about. But here's what I'm going to say in terms of recommending JSOW as a way to learn to be a yeah, training ground, to be a Wikipedia uh, editor, if you care, which is she gave me a lesson for like an hour and a half or two hours, one day, five years ago. And finally, because Heather's my best girlfriend, I was interested in a topic enough so that I could go back to Wikipedia, I remembered my uh, screen name and my password. I, it was like, oh, I can't even believe it. And I knew how to do what I had to do to edit Heather's page. And so I texted to Susan and I said, you're really a good teacher. <laughs> well, she texted me first with some spelling errors in here and I said, log in and change it yourself, Wendy. And, she, and that's what I said. <laughs> I did it. Um, Jimmy's. But she's a great teacher, and it's it is. Yeah, you don't have to work for my team to, to to edit Wikipedia. You know, there there's things that need to be fixed. Do you have any Do you have any stories about like sweet moments of justice that you've like uh, made some good edits and like gotten rid of like false information? Oh yeah! Information? Oh my God! How much time do you have? Um, I have many stories. I'm going to give you one. I remember. Vasula Raiden, who I'd never heard of before, she was a medium who said that she's getting, and she still is around, she's, she gets messages from God, Daniel, um, the Virgin Mary, you know, all, all, all their friends. And um, I was just starting out as a Wikipedia editor. I wasn't really, I didn't have the pro, I didn't have this project yet. 
And what I was doing is something called backwards editing. It's another thing I've, I've um, coined. And that's where you take a magazine that is notable, like Skeptical Inquirer magazine, and you open it up and uh, you find an article. And I found one written by a man named Joe Nickel. I don't know if anybody knows who Joe Nickel is, but he's a, a Skype. A Skype. Skype. He's a <laughs> definitely not Skype. Skeptic, investigator. He writes about all kinds of things, miracles, and and um, he's, he does real research, you know, with like microscopes and like DNA and all that kind of stuff. Really very fascinating man. But he had written an article about this mystic named Vasula Raiden. So I went to her, her Wikipedia page and it was just all pro Vasula Raiden. It was just like, oh, she's just the best. And, you know, the Catholic Church has sort of endorsed her and blah, 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 on and on. And so I had taken this article by Joe Nickel and I said, I'm going to put this in here somehow. So I was quoting Joe Nickel because he's, he's notable. The, he's writing in a, a secondary source. He's writing in a journal that's also notable, which is Skeptical Inquirer magazine. And so I went in and I was putting things like uh, Joe Nickel, according to Joe Nickel, see, I can't give my opinion, but I can give Joe Nickel's opinion, which is my opinion. According to Joe, uh, 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 investigator, uh, skeptical investigator Joe Nickel, uh, Vasula Raiden's, um, the messages she receives from Jesus and God and all of her friends, Daniel and all those people, they all seem to have the same spelling errors. And they have the same phrase of speech, you know? He's like, why does Daniel speak in the same spelling errors? Because she, she does automatic writing. I don't know if you know what that is. Is where you're writing and it's just like you're getting it and you're like, and she comes out to her, her, her believers and she says, look, I got a new message from the Virgin Mary today. She says, we all have to be good to each other. Isn't it great? Oh, praise God. So she, she would do stuff like that. But the message she got from the Virgin Mary is same, like I say, same spelling errors and so on, which are oddly the same spelling errors that Vasula Raiden makes. So um, he also said that he believed, he challenged her to be tested. He said that if he, he suspects that if she was to be blindfolded, that she would find it difficult to stay within the lines of the paper. Now, if you're being controlled by a god or whatever, I would think that they would be able to follow the lines of the paper. So I put that on her Wikipedia page, and I, you know, it was criticism. And I thought it was, and I took out some other stuff. And then they came in and they were like, no, you can't do that. Revert. I was like, wait a minute here. I am a new editor. I don't really know what I'm doing. And, but I think that's okay. So I went to the talk page and I said, I don't think you guys can revert this. It seems to me that this is, I'm following the, the, the guidelines. Now, on a talk page, we might say, okay, well, you're adding too many quotes or maybe you should, you know, you're using a little too much opinion. There's things that we could do on a talk page. We'll talk about it. We'll, we'll make it more encyclopedic. And so, um, so they said, I said, no, I think I can have this on here. And they said, we're calling an admin. I said, fine, call an admin. <laughs> call them. And uh, so the admins came over. They went and found an admin to come in and take me down, you know, talk me down. Because she's a, a living person. And the rules are tougher if the person's living versus somebody who's dead. Um, the stand because of slander and all these other kinds of things. So you have to have much better sources. So they went in and they said, they read it through and they said, wait a minute, this woman, this S. Gerbic, whoever she is, because I don't, you don't know who I am, this person's right. In fact, no, no, she's right. And there should be more criticism on this page. Why isn't there more criticism on this page? And then they started looking into the edited history of the people who had been writing the page. Turns out they're supporters, like they're followers of hers. And another thing that they were doing, which is incorrect, is you aren't supposed to just edit one Wikipedia page and that's your what, it, Wikipedia page of life. You do, Because it sounds like you have an agenda. You need to go edit pages for your high school. You edit pages for the, the town you live in, for a building, for butterflies, for frogs, for whatever you want. But you need to show that you are here to create a better Wikipedia, not Vasula Raiden's agenda for her page. And, and it doesn't help that, you know, you could look and find out that these are people who are her real supporters and so on. So, yes, Mark. So it was nice. It was a great slap down of these people. Mm -hmm. I forgot what I was saying. There was another issue where you, uh, there's so many of them. <laughs> uh, I'll, t I'll try and remember it again. Okay, well, I was thinking yeah. of one more with uh, Walmart. Uh, they were they were doing uh, homeopathy. They were endorsing homeopathy. And I think Center for Inquiry had come out and said, no, we, we, they published something. Mm -hmm. The founder of Wikipedia. Yeah. Oh, Jimmy Wells, the founder of Wikipedia. Oh, my God. 
That's the big one. Oh, yeah. Jimmy Wells is, he had, oh, God, I can't quote it exactly. Um, Jimmy Wells is the founder of Wikipedia. Wikipedia, believe it or not, it's only like, what, 12 or 13 years old. I don't know where time goes. But he, um, there's a lot of oh, people out there who are alternative medicine people who believe that it should be given fair weight on Wikipedia, that we should be able to say, well, you know, some people believe that this, if you eat moss and stuff like that, your cancer will go away. Some people believe that, you know, and, and so they had done one of these change.orgs kind of things. So um, they had submitted it to Jimmy Wells, the founder of Wikipedia, who's really just an editor of Wikipedia, I guess now. And um, Jimmy Wells came out and said some, he slapped him down with a public blog saying, you know, we cannot believe all this nonsense. You know, get a life, get, start researching and, and stop believing in such nonsense, something like that. But I got hit on social media as if I had written that. It was like, you go, Susan. I'm like, I, I had nothing to do with this. This is this is this is Jimmy Wells, and I it just made my notoriety go up even higher because it was people all of a sudden realized that you know that that there is this thing called people scientific skepticism, and that we're out there trying to make sure these pages are right, and we're trying to hold these people accountable and get them off of there and get these pages right. But oh, that was that was that was a, a, a bellwater day, and it's and, wow. and they and they want. Wikipedia to change the rules. So. They wanted the rules to change so that they could have quackery on the pages and be, it'd be a right to have it on there. It was, yeah, they were very angry. It wasn't fair. It wasn't balanced because they're looking at the media like they think the media is supposed to be, um, you know, they put somebody on, they, they're, here's NASA on, on, and then they put somebody who believes that we didn't go to the moon. It's like, no, that's not, we don't do that on Wikipedia. That's not how it goes. What, uh, uh, how valuable source blogs are or aren't? Oh, blogs are, we don't use blogs. No, we can't use blogs. They're personal blogs. We can put on a, a Wikipedia page that so-and-so has a blog. We could put, this is their blog. But we can't quote their blog unless it's for something, we can't even quote a personal website unless it's something like where they're saying, you know, I went to high school in such and such high school. We could go back and we could say, we could quote that because that's kind of, personal information. It wouldn't be a reporter from the New York Times asking him that question. So to some extent, we can, you know, do their birthday, what their parents' names were. Uh, blogs can't be their opinion. We can put, we have used it a few times. For example, when Nathan Phelps mentioned on Facebook that his father had gone into hospice, we were able to say, according to Nathan, uh, Fred Phelps' son, Nathan Phelps, who, um, who released on his Facebook page on such and such day that he heard that we could say that because it's, it's not a, it's like saying we heard this from this place. So take it as you, you know, whatever. And then once, of course, once it came out, then we were able to, once it came out in the news and it was obviously everywhere, then we could, we could, we could change it to just he is in hospice and it's been reported by these news agencies. It's looked into it and blah, blah, blah. So we, we, we can't use blogs. Sorry. Yes. Does Wikipedia does Wikipedia cache a copy of the citation at the point that you make the citation? Um, no, but we could use the we can use the. He's asking is the citation that we used is it cached? So it's in a place that we could go back and look at exactly the citation that they had. No, um, you can use some tools like the Wayback Machines or something like that, and you can cache it. And those have been used. Uh, we've changed it to say, you know, like maybe a psychic has said that uh, they've had so many predictions and then they changed their website to, to look like they actually made the predictions correctly. We can go back and change, we can cache the page so that it shows that, the, that their website did not indeed say that on this day. It said it on this day. We can do that. Um, the Each citation has the date, like if you're looking at a YouTube video or a website, the Wikipedia editor has to say, I looked at it on this day. There's a date. It says it was access assessed, it was accessed on this day at this time. I looked at this page and it was this is what I saw. So um, you could follow up on it. But mostly you could just if you really needed to, you could do that. That's a good question. But just, just think about this. Um, how is Wiki funded? Wikipedia? Through donations. 
And there's really not a lot of funding that needs to go on. There's a lot of people who donate to Wikipedia because they really feel very strongly about um, getting knowledge out to the world. It's a really wonderful site. Um, it's funded by um, just people, just everyday people. And um, they don't have a huge overhead. I know they do, like, uh, they instruct professors and things like that. They have some overhead. But for the most part, it's never advertising. No, there's no advertising except for their own asking for donations. Yes, Mindy? Well, there's no advertising exactly, but every once in a while I go on Wikipedia to look something up, and at the top of the page, it'll say, it'll say, say Wikimedia Foundation donations. Yes. Yeah, they need money. They need money. And you can just use your PayPal and make a donation. It's three bucks. I figure if everybody who looked at it, Donated three dollars every couple months. That you know. That would do it. Yeah. If you think about it, if you were to just keep track of how many times you look at a Wikipedia page, maybe donate a nickel for every time you look at it, and that's probably two or three bucks uh, over a month. Uh, it's time. Um, GSOW. We are not. We can't take donations, obviously, but we do have people who will sponsor me and my editors for different functions, like to go to a conference. You really want us to go and talk to a group in Louisiana. You know, I'll be happy to take your PayPal, and you can. <laughs> I'll stay on a couch. I don't care. No, um, so we don't have any funding at all. We're we're totally just volunteers. All of us volunteers everywhere. Many 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 hours of uh, work each day to put this in to happen. A couple more questions. Come on, you know you want to know about Wikipedia. Come on. It's, it's, How many editors? I have about a hundred. Uh, it's fluctuated over the last four years. It almost always stays at about 100. Yes? Do you ever look back at the, um, uh, on like, you know, pages that, that, that you know have had, you know, controversial stuff, like you mentioned, you know, you getting reverted right away. Mm -hmm. um, do you or any of your editors ever look back in the, um, in the history to try to, you know, find things that look like they've been maybe not necessarily maliciously, but either either maliciously or maybe errantly deleted. Um, that maybe that maybe there was valuable stuff that's been lost. From oh yeah, it happens all the time. I just was looking. He's he's asking if anybody if we look back on the reverts and see what usually happens is that when you write a page or you're interested in a page, you put it on a watch list so that whenever you're interested later. Um, you get a you look at your watch list and anytime anything's been changed on that list you'll see um, you'll see what's been changed. So most of the time things that are reverted are fixed. You say, oh my gosh, they reverted that. Sometimes it could take a year before it's reverted and you won't notice it. And I've noticed that every so often and I keep saying to myself, I've got to go back and assign that to somebody to go in and put that edit in. And and you know maybe the reason why it was reverted was a really valid reason. Maybe we really did mess up. We didn't have a good citation or it wasn't written right. Or it could have been just some asshole that just went in and just said, revert, I don't like that. We don't like editors like that. If you're going to revert something, we ask people to say why you reverted and try to educate the person who's doing the editing to try to help them to become better, stronger editors because that's obviously what we need. We, we GSOW is 100 people. The, uh, there's thousands of editors on Wikipedia. Yes. Is there any voting process among editors yes. to make decisions? Good question. There are voting. If something, let's say, well, like when Emory Emory had a page first, he had a page years ago, and it was deleted. And uh, they said it wasn't noteworthy enough. And that's because people put up the pages, and they don't know what they're doing. They just put up a page, and then it just sits there, and they don't finish it off. And so his page was deleted, and they usually, if they don't delete it like in the first day or two, then it has to go through a process where there's some voting. And it's not exactly voting. It's more like a discussion where the editors, and there could be just anybody, usually people who have a reputation of being involved in that world. Right now there's one going on about uh, acupuncture. And they think that they want to, some people want to ban any editor who is an acupuncturist from editing a page on Wikipedia on acupuncture. So there's a, oh, there's a mile of, of information about yes and no, is that a good idea? And they're like, well, medical doctors, maybe they should have to say that they have a conflict of interest. And what's the difference between a medical doctor versus a, you know, it's like, and then if you go down that slope, then you're talking about anybody who's a homeopath. And then if you go that, that's then anybody who's a doctor who's, who's um, ever uh, sold um, 
yeah, anything where a doctor has had some kind of bias on, maybe they're trying to say, use this product, not this product, maybe use this medication, not this product medication. So it's a slippery slope. But what we, we, so there's a lot of talk about it and there's voting of sorts and they're trying to influence each other. It'll start out and say, keep, uh, delete, yes, no, you know, whatever. They just put down whatever it is and then they give their argument and everybody just talks about the argument and they respond to each other. I've been reading this over and I see, you know, I'm, I'm starting to change my mind. I'm going to change my vote from keep to delete because of the arguments made by such and such. So again, it's more, again, if the world could be run by Wikipedia editors, this would be a much better world because the way we have to do things and we have to have good faith and we have to assume we have it. Cool. Let's uh, leave it there. Okay. I guess that's it. You can talk to me afterwards. Thank you. Thank you very much. something you know and I thought that's it that's it and at that point I thought I need to do what birds that get out of cages do I need to fly and I did I thought that's it I'm out of here and for nine months I tried to figure out where I was flying